Hey there, welcome back to season two of Modern East Basics. I'm PG Ty Botting, and we're gonna start this season off right at the bottom, right at the, right at the very beginning of things with footwork, looking at why we move the way we do, why we wanna step the way we do, and what that gets us. All right, let's get into it. So before we actually start moving around, I wanna give you three kind of ideas and principles to think about. The first one is, when we're using footwork, what are we doing? Well, our feet are in contact with the ground, right? And we are using that to either push off of, pull, somehow using the ground to move us around. So we're depending on friction. So it's a leverage for you, if you will. So the friction provides leverage off of your feet. That's the starting point. And we're also depending on the structure of our body, right? So almost like we're bracing as we move. So that's the first principle. And you can apply that whether it's defense or attack. You can apply that for going fast. You can apply that for going powerful And this, again, Depends on if you're attacking, defending, all of that is wide open. It's just we're talking about how are we moving, what are we doing when we move, and what can we use that for. So the next idea then is waiting, okay? Waiting and twisting. So as we're moving, you have to twist through your connection with the ground, okay? As you move, as you step, as you strike, whatever it is that you're gonna do, going through the ground and then through your hips to do the twisting, right? That's gonna affect our weighting, right? As we move forward, we're get, we might have our weighting change, shifting back, shifting forward, shifting to the side. And what I mean by shifting your weight, obviously I don't want you to do this. You're probably not gonna, <laughs> no reason to, to lean into your moves, okay? So when I'm saying shifting your weight, it's, it's really just riding on top of your hips, using the ground as friction to deliver force and apply it to your movement. And it also depends on maybe affecting your range and your reach, whether you're defending or attacking. And then lastly, you want to think about diagonals. So when I'm, what I mean by diagonals is almost everything except for 0 and 180, okay? So even 90, if you're going to shift to the side, involves some twisting and, some, and an angle offline. So really I'm avoiding the forward and backwards motion. So triangles, diagonals, however you want to think about it, right? We're all familiar with the female and male triangle for FMA footwork. Um, but I'm just going to concentrate on thinking about it in terms of diagonals, right? whether I'm going forward or back as a diagonal, and whether or not I'm making a triangle. But the triangles are gonna also affect how much ground you cover, okay? It affects your positioning, your range, it'll affect your timing when you move. Those three things are, footwork is, depends on friction and bracing and structure against the ground, weighting and twisting as you step, and you've got diagonals. So keep those in mind as we go forward and move, and we'll go from there. So, as we start thinking about moving, I wanted to get a weapon here to give us something to move with. Got my training sword here, and I'm gonna talk about the first thing, motion. So we're gonna get moving or motion. First thing I wanna think about is terms of safety. Safety for you as a defender, or safety for you as the attacker. Let's start with the attacker, because it's probably easier to see. So what happens, if I step out towards you, and I strike, I can do it a lot of different ways, but let's just do a diagonal strike, okay? So I do a diagonal strike and do it this way, that's pretty good, right? No problem. What if I were to do it this way? You already probably see a couple things that are probably a little bit uncomfortable. First one I wanna talk about is the safety for the path of the weapon. If I step out with the same side as my weapon comes from, that naturally clears my other leg out of the way. So if there's a deflection, it doesn't go into my leg as easily. Or if um, I'm blocking something, right? If he was coming at this leg from that side, that also tends to make me get my leg out of the way. It works on the other side as well, right? I step that way and do slash, I step that way and do slash. Both of those are pretty safe, right? Or even if I wanna do one after the other, right? Okay, so you can think about it in terms of safety. As an attacker, it's really good to use a sword because you can be very sensitive to, wow, I got my leg in, out of the way, and wow, I got my leg in the way. But that also applies for defense, like I said. So if someone were coming at me and I wanted to block it, say they were coming at a low forehand shot and I want to block it, I might move that leg back as well as blocking if I were to block, okay? Same thing on this side, right? So think about um, evasion, thinking about clearing the path for the weapon. And there's another aspect to that too, is the range. Range, why do I step? Okay, again, for defensive side, if you're coming at me and I step to the side, even if you're committed here and adjust, now you have to go a little bit longer because of the angle to get to me, especially if I go straight to the side, okay? 
that can make the range a happy camper and then when I twist I can still reach you okay so first thing stepping for safety to avoid stepping for safety to manage the path of the weapon to clear a path for the weapon okay but let's talk about the orientation because that'll affect your range if I step out and I twist in that gets me one out of the apex of his of his positioning and two gets me in a, in a place where I can still with a little twist reach him very easily okay one of the ways to think about that is sort of a military or pilot mindset you want to keep them in your 12 o'clock okay and you want to get out of their 12 o'clock so if you were there coming straight at me why would I come straight at you to attack right if I'm coming if you're coming straight at me and I deflect a little bit and then attack you back counter attack Okay, or even if you're coming with a poke and I attack, um, I'm no longer at the apex of your intent and I'm keeping you in the apex of my intent and keeping you in my 12. So I call that facing your work, right? Some, people, some styles use that, some styles say, hey, keep them in your 12. The whole point is, is you wanna keep facing your work and make sure that they have to adjust to keep facing you, right? So they're always behind, okay? The other thing is, is if I'm attacking you and I'm actually coming straight at you and I wanna attack you, I have an apex of power where I hit the most and I got my range the best. Anything to the side of that messes with the arc and it can just be what we call fading. That happened in another video and I'll link to that in the corner there. Um, but your stepping controls the distance, controls your defenses and things as well. So orientation. Keep them in your 12 and make sure you get out of their 12 o'clock. Okay? Pretty simple. Um, lastly, you've got power generation, right? How do you want to deliver what you're doing? Let me do a bad example here. So I'm going to step out on this diagonal, but I'm going to step with the wrong leg. If I'm attacking you back on the other diagonal, I'm having to twist against my hips. One, I can't face my work completely. And two, I'm fighting myself to reach you. Okay? That puts me in a disadvantage. All the advantage I got by stepping, I've lost by twisting and tying myself up. Okay, so that's one thing to think about when I'm stepping on this, uh, stepping on this female type triangle, right? The forward diagonal. Um, same thing, if I was going to step in and step back in for the attack, it's the same thing. I need to put my hip into this rack. So a lot of times you'll see people slashing and slashing and slashing, right? Maybe they'll slash upward, and that's a different thing. But even still, we're trying to keep the... Weapon path clear and keeping our hips pointed at our target and capable of delivering the twist and the power, okay? Let me illustrate one part of that power. If I step, even if I don't use my hips, so I'm not going to come back, maybe I'll start, I'll step in just where I was keeping, facing the target, that's good. And I just use a, an attack with an arm. Depending how strong I am, that could be good or it could be not so good. But if I come in, I just naturally let it swing with my hip. All of that hip and back goes into it. All of it goes into it. And now I'm hitting with my body. Now I'm hitting with my back, with my hips, my waist, all of these strong things that I can put my weight in without sacrificing or over committing. But you also use your hips to power what it is you're trying to do. When I step to the side and I slash, this twist of the hip goes in my weapon if I'm going down, right? If I step to the side, this twist goes in the hip. Hit, even if I'm going just high, right? Boom. Boom. Okay. Wham. Wham. Right? Ideally what happens is when I move, I strike and that whole motion that I'm putting into my motion goes into my strike. Okay? Even if I'm going up, right? Right? Goes up into my strike or down into your strike, whatever. But you put your hips into your strike. And so that lets you do three things with the same motion. One, I evade. Right? I evade, or even if I'm worried about my weapon, right? I evade consequences of accidental contact. That's the first thing. The next thing is I orient, make sure that my attention is where I want it to be and I have all the options that I want to do. And the next one is power generation, right? Power delivery. If I'm striking and I pivot my hips, I pivot my hips, right? I pivot my hips, I pivot my hips. I'm putting that into my strikes. Okay, putting that into my blocks, putting that into whatever I want to do, I power it with my body, with my motion. So stepping helps you with power generation, it helps you with distance and fading.
It helps you with uh, delivery of that power motion because you have to get there and you have to have it um, applicable, right? You have to have it available so that when you step in, you can apply that power to whatever you're doing, okay? Okay. Whatever you're doing, okay? So there's just some very, very basic principles for why we're moving what we are with footwork. I could have used triangle drills. I could have used a lot of fancy terminology. I wanted to make it accessible and simple and straightforward. So we started with friction. We then went to how it moves us around, how it twists us, and where it gets us. And then we talked about what kind of motion we're getting. We talked about how we're facing our targets, how we're keeping them from facing us. If they were to move, then we would move. Um, and how we use the motion that we have already generated to also deliver the power, okay? Okay? All sorts of ways you can do that. All right, so that's just some ideas today. I wanted to have a short one uh, to start off for the season. I've got a lot of good ideas. We're going to do a lot of very basic principles work. We're going to do some empty hand. We're going to do some application. So stay tuned. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed it. You know, all the normal like and subscribe and notification, all that good stuff. In the meantime, we'll catch you in a week or two for the next one. All right, take care.